Welcome to another episode of The Artsy Raven, a show about writing and publishing with your host, J.F. Garrard. Welcome to another episode of The Artsy Raven. We have Rivka Reyes, who is a Chicago-bred, LA-buttered actor, writer, producer, and musician. They rose to fame in the 2003 film School of Rock and have been slaying the theater, film, and comedy world ever since. She starred in the Chicago and Los Angeles production of Spamilton, the off-Broadway parody of Hamilton. They hosted a podcast called Where Are We Now, in which she interviewed fellow former child stars. Riv's screenwriting debut, Gianna, also stars Riv as both leads and is co-produced by Jack Black. Most recently, they starred in Onks the Fortuitous and The Talisman of Souls, which premiered at Sundance in 2023. In their free time, they can be found line dancing, powerlifting, and hosting Howl, a full moon party in Los Angeles. Recently, they starred with uh, Lindsay Hicks, Marsha Warfield, and Jill Lawson in a movie called A Holiday I Do. This movie was made to change the lack of LGBTQ representation as an inclusive Christmas movie. The film was made for everyone. This is not a coming out story, but a story showing that love is love. And 10% of the film supports the Trevor Project, and the film is streaming on Tello Films. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What a lovely introduction. Now, I have actually never watched The School of, of Rock, so um, so can you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, how you became an actor? Yeah. Um, and yeah, no worries. Uh, I, I love when I meet people who haven't seen it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's rare. So, um, yeah, I am an actor, writer, producer, um, musician, as you said already, um, school of rock was my first audition and, um, it, uh, was the first acting I had ever done. And, it was great. I mean, the, the process was, I mean, this is of course 20 years ago. Um, and the process was just incredible. Everyone on set was so, so great to work with actors and crew included. And we just had an amazing time on set. And, you know, I bonded really hard with the other kids that were in the film with me. We're all still very, very close. We have a group text that we've had for <laughs> many many years and yeah we're just all very supportive of each other's endeavors creatively and personal life achievements and stuff too um and ever since school of rock i've been bitten by the bug of acting i I loved being on set when i was in school of rock and i was just like yeah this is what i want to do for the rest of my life and you know in college i i majored in acting and i uh, started doing improv and comedy in Chicago and moved to LA with the cast of Spamilton. I did a lot of theater um, and now cut to today and a holiday I do is out. And it's it's really special to be a part of something that is um, just directly aiding the LGBT community um, providing more representation for queer women in the rom-com space because oftentimes the lesbian, you know, is like the side character, best friend of the straight girl, um, and she doesn't really get that much of a story. So I really love that in Holiday I Do, the two main characters are lesbians who end up falling for each other and it's uh yeah it's really it was special to watch it with my fiance and my mother-in-law like we we all kind of watched it together and it was just really sweet you know seeing my my mother-in-law being like this is like the first time I've seen a lesbian in a holiday movie and I was just like yeah it's I think a lot of people's so yeah it's true I mean when I saw the promo for it I was like oh that's interesting like yeah I've never heard of one but um yeah I mean we do have another one called happiest season um that came out a couple years ago with Kristen Stewart and Aubrey Plaza's in it and Allison Brie a bunch of people it's it's pretty good I mean it's on Hulu I liked happiest season a lot of people have complaints about the fact that it is um a story in which one of the women in the couple hasn't come out to her family yet and there's like a lot of trauma there around 
the idea of coming out to her family being scary. Um, a little bit scary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For some yeah. people it is. Yeah. My family uh, took it pretty well when I came out. They were kind of like, that makes sense. Like was kind oh, of yeah. like <laughs> how they took it. I mean, and granted, I came out in high school by basically my mom being like, oh yeah, prom's coming up. Who are you going with? And I was just like, I said the name of a girl and and she was like, oh, like as friends. And I was just like, no. And they were just like, mm. okay, yeah. well, that's great. And my dad, of course, made a joke being like, well, at least you're not going to get pregnant on prom night. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> I'm glad that one of your biggest fears is is not going to come true. Um, but yeah, I know for some people it's not as easy um, as it was for me. My My parents are really cool and I'm really grateful for them. But um, yeah, I, I like that in a holiday I do, there's no big like Jane coming out moment. It's never really a conversation that's had in the movie of like Sue and Jane being like, well, I came out and I was kicked out of my house and all of that. Um, none of that really happens in this, which is really nice to see. Yeah, because in the movie storyline, the... um. The, your well the the partner uh like she's married to an to a husband and they get divorced and then you're the wedding planner for the new marriage and that's mm -hmm. how you guys meet yeah so there's no okay because I was trying to think how would they transition to a different romance you know that's not you know the straight sex and whatnot so okay so okay yeah, I, I, I think yet, it's so. it's cool to see that kind of representation too because that is common for a lot of women who are formerly married to men maybe they're like later in life gays who like <laughs> have come out after they've you know had a kid or something I have a lot of friends that have that experience where they've been married to a man who was maybe their high school sweetheart or they were with mm -hmm. a, the same guy for a long time after having kids and they're still friends and they still love each other but you know the like like Jane says in the movie like not able to love their partner in the way that they deserve to be loved and there's still best friend love there it's just not like the romantic kind and I think it's pretty common for queer women to still be friends with their exes anyway so it's, it's very I think that's very nice I mean like when you talk about modern families and you know people have children they divorce but they can still get along like you know there's no bitterness and fighting and like you know it's just peaceful so it's yeah a new, new way yeah, and you know, even in in the holiday I do, we get to see Heather, who's Mark's fiance, bride to be, um, have that kind of awkward tension with Jane at the top. But not to spoil anything too too much. But over the course of the movie, things get resolved, as most things do in a mm -hmm. holiday rom com. Now, growing up, did you have a tough time? Because I know you're mixed, like. I mean, I, I'm in a mixed marriage too, because I'm just thinking about my child. Like, was it hard growing up in two different cultures and being an actor? Yeah, I will say I went to a, a public school um, for elementary school in Chicago that was in a predominantly black and brown neighborhood, but the school was pretty segregated in that they had like a gifted program and I'm using air quotes <laughs> and a non-gifted program and there was a very strong race divide in in the gifted program and non-gifted program and being one of the only Asian people in my class was kind of weird um also being one of the only Jewish people in my class was very strange um but I I would say that my parents both are not too um, heavy handed on the, the cultural upbringing of either side. And so, you know, my mom, her, her parents assimilated really hard. They really, you know, did everything they could to fit into the mostly white suburb that they lived in. And, you know, a lot of the culture, um, the rich Filipino culture on my mom's side was kind of muted and, and turned down a little bit, which makes me sad um, but in the last couple of years, I've been really just like doing a lot of research and reading a lot of books and just spending time in Filipino and Jewish community, um, getting to know some of the rituals and the cultural traditions and things that 
make our people unique and special and getting to love some of those things and then bringing them back to my family and being like, hey, did you know that during this time of the year, um, it's very common for religious Jewish people to um, do 49 days in a row of devotion to the creator uh, or, you know, you know, uh, line dancing has become such a big part of my life. And I didn't know this, but line dancing is a huge part of Filipino culture. And it's been nice to kind of reintegrate <laughs> that into my my life in a fun, exciting way. So you wake up early in the morning and go to the mall to line dance? Like, where do you guys do line? I see like the Chinese ladies here go to the malls and they have their <laughs> boombox. And they're yeah. Everywhere. Well, it's funny because I, I learn um, the choreography from a bunch of uh, older like Chinese ladies on YouTube, but uh, <laughs> it's so cute because they like they they do the tutorial. It's a big group of them in this like dance studio, I assume, all wearing little cowboy boots and they're all doing the dance. And then this one lady teaches it in English and then she che teaches it in Chinese. So that's really sweet. Um, but no, um, in Los Angeles and San Francisco, there is a queer line dancing movement that is currently taking over the world called Stud Country. And I um, have a lot of friends that go and, and I was seeing all my friends line dancing and these cute little cowboy looking outfits and I was just like I want to do that that sounds fun and and I started going and now it's like my my addiction I go sometimes I go twice a week it's pretty unhinged but I I really enjoy it um and you know I'm planning my wedding right now so there will be line okay. dancing Congratulations. In reception yeah. thank you <laughs> Wow. Now, okay, when I I admit when I Google your name, like I found a lot of interviews about how you had some challenges after the school of rock. Like, what do you think was the biggest challenge you faced and how did you overcome it since that experience? I think the biggest challenge that I faced and continue to face is the the narrative that I spin in my head that I peaked at a certain age and that like I only really had that 15 minutes of fame and then I'll never do anything as cool or as impactful as School of Rock. And, you know, even if I die tomorrow and School of Rock is still the biggest credit that I have on IMDb, I'll be happy because the impact that School of Rock has had has been phenomenal. But um, I have learned since then to kind of try and quiet that voice in my head that tells me that I had one chance and now it's over um, and just continue to write and create and and produce and, and act in things that I love and that are usually coming from my community. Um, Onyx, the fortuitous, you know, came up during COVID, during the pandemic. And um, the director of that just reached out to me from seeing me on TikTok and um cast me in it because I don't know I guess I just fit the vibe of <laughs> the character yeah. um and and it was so fun to be a part of that project and seeing the kind of cult following that Onyx has and hopefully seeing the cult following that things like A Holiday I Do or any of my various other projects that I've been working on over the last couple of years have had um, I'm happy to continue to create because that is what I love to do. I mean, from the moment I set foot on set on School of Rock, I was just like, yeah, this is cool. This is what I want to do. This is my job now. And it has been ever since. So I think I just need to continue to work on the kind of regulation of my emotions and my thinking around success and the kind of concept of fame. Um because I I don't want to act because I want to be famous. I want to act because I love acting. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So do you have any advice for people who want to become actors? Um, I would say it's just more fun to do it when you're coming at it from a place of love for the craft rather than for the blue check mark and the millions of followers. Um, acting is not the most lucrative job until it becomes that way. And while it is not, and when you are still a person who has some semblance of anonymity, 
cherish those moments because it is really nice to have a private life. <laughs> it is really nice to um, have some autonomy over um, your your life and not feel this pressure of having to look a certain way all the time. Um, and that's the other thing too, that I had a lot of struggles with was my, you know, body dysmorphia and stuff like that. A lot of women, um, and people in the industry just in general <laughs> come up against that. Um, there was this lie I was telling myself, like, if I get tattoos, I will never work again. And that's simply not true. I, <laughs> you know, the tattoos I have, like, I feel give me confidence and the confidence helps me nail my auditions. So, um, really you do have autonomy over how you look and how you style yourself. And, um, the other thing is that I would share casting directors and directors and writers and producers and everyone behind the scenes. Um, they all want you to succeed as an actor. They don't want you to come in and have a terrible audition. They're not out to get you. They're not looking for you to fail. They're rooting for you as much as you're rooting for yourself. Um, and as scary as auditions can be, um, if you approach them like it's an opportunity to get to do what you love in front of people, um, that's, I think, a healthier mindset to take with you into the room. Cool. So, okay, you're in a holiday movie. Now, what are you going to be doing for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Christmas is my second favorite time of year. My first is Halloween. Um, and I have already started my traditions of watching all my favorite holiday movies, including Elf and The Holiday. And last night I watched one that I hadn't seen before called Spirited with Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds. And that was oh. pretty cute. It's a musical, um, but it's kind of based on the Christmas Carol um, or sorry, a Christmas Carol. Mm. <laughs> um Muppets Christmas Carol is in the queue um and listening to Christmas music every day and making cookies and eating all the carbs and yeah. <laughs> getting uh yeah getting all my carbs in before I go into beast mode uh training for a couple of uh film projects I have coming up but um, me and my fiance are going to be going out to the Bay area where she's from and spending Christmas with her family. We are doing a little secret Santa. I have already purchased my gift for my secret Santa person. I think they are really going to enjoy it. And yeah, I, I just plan on celebrating in a safe <laughs> way. Um, I don't really drink or do any drugs or anything like that. I, I've got, you know, coming up on six years sober in a couple of weeks. And, you know, I just plan to continue doing what I'm doing and awesome. celebrating life every day. Now, what is the latest project you're working on? I know you do a lot of things. I know on mm -hmm. your website, I don't know if you're still doing tarot card readings and mm -hmm. your podcast and how did that? Yeah, my podcast is on hiatus as okay. podcasts, I'm sure you know, are pretty... <laughs> There are a lot of work to yes. edit and I just I yeah. was working with a company who was editing it for me and distributing it but I ultimately was just like I can't afford to pay these people what they deserve anymore and I was uh not really wanting to edit it myself so I put it on hiatus but um I do still read tarot I do that at events in Los Angeles people will hire me sometimes to come to a party and just bring a couple of decks of cards and read for as many people as I can in one night. Um, I also host my own full moon parties with my fiance and they're really fun. Um, and I do one-on-one -on -one sessions on zoom or in person, if people are comfortable doing that in LA. Um, but as far as film projects go, I'm currently producing and slated to star in two upcoming short films. One is called Scalped and the other is called Are You Fucking Kidding Me? And they're both <laughs> horror with a cool. tinge of comedy. They're they're really fun projects. I'm really excited about them. Um, and then what else? 
Yeah, just promoting Holiday I Do and Onyx, which is um, also streaming on a platform called Screambox. You can also rent or buy it on Apple TV and Amazon. Um, and Holiday I Do is on Tello. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, speak with us today. And I hope you have a great Christmas and your wedding. Uh, I hope that, you know, everything goes well. Thank you. For more upcoming episodes of the Artsy Raven about writing and publishing, visit us at jfgarrard.com slash podcast. A reminder to Patreon subscribers that there is bonus content available for every episode on the Patreon website. If you enjoyed the show, you can show your appreciation by buying us some digital coffee. The Artsy Raven is produced by J.F. Garrard. The voice in the show's introduction is Chris Gorman, and music is by Tim Moore. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, stay safe. Mm-hmm.